morning, everyone, and welcome back to your Daily Five. This is Leslie Chuflis, and I'd like to thank Stock Charts for inviting me back today. And we're going to go over um, some charts today. I think we're going to probably be pretty much range bound until the election. Um, now, the range bound, we could be seeing some larger ranges, and I'm going to be focusing mostly on the indexes today and show you with the indexes um, some areas that we can be watching for the price to potentially go to. The first thing I want to cover, though, today is the, the VIX. The VIX has been really interesting this year. Um, the VIX measures the volatility of the market, and it's inverse to price. So what you're seeing here is the VIX on the left side and a chart of the S&P index on the right side. And if we look back right over here, we're in <clears throat> to where the February decline started, and you can see the VIX had a extremely strong move to the upside. In fact, the upside of the VIX at that time reached almost where it was in the 2009 decline. Um, and you can see can, uh, inversely that the price moved to the downside. So that's, that's what you can expect to see with the VIX. But interestingly, if you look over here in this section where I have this red square on the VIX, and over on the right side, I have a, a green square. When the market, the S&P here, uh, where this blue line is, is just prior to the breakout to new highs, the, the VIX, as the market was climbing to the upside, the VIX stopped moving to the downside and was holding uh, and really refusing to move down. And it started to even move to the upside just prior to the S&P getting to these highs. Well, that's a divergence in the VIX. And we saw that back in February. And with the things I use, I can scale down and find some other patterns that work with that that can kind of you know, say, we may be looking for some more downside. So with this move to the downside, the VIX has moved up and now we're back into a range again. So I have some levels in the VIX here marked um, that we can be watching. Uh, again, this is inverse. If the VIX is moving down, the price would be moving up. So let's move now and look at some indexes. So on here, I have the um, Dow Jones Industrial. And this is a chart I've had on before with the Daily Five. And, but I'll walk you through quickly if this is your first time watching with me. Um, these are what are called ABCD patterns. And this one is a sell pattern. This one ABCD is a buy pattern. And then we just recently had another A. B, C, D cell pattern that completed up here at these previous resistance points. And we've had a turn to the downside with this. So that is giving us a good resistance area um, to, to watch now. And I think what we're probably going to be seeing is this range forming. Now, how large this range goes and, and the volatility of it uh, remains to be seen. But I've marked here with these blue dots some areas all the way back to some larger Fibonacci retracements, starting with the lows in March, all the way up to the highs here that we've seen into early September. So on this particular pattern, we can see a retracement down to this area or even deeper retracement down testing these lows here. If we break these lows, then we may see retracement down to around this point 382, that's from the low to the high, and that's also coming back into this previous range area that the Dow spent some time in and has retested a few times, and so I would expect some support to come into this area. If the price were to come lower than the center of that previous range around this 0.50 retracement is where I would be looking, and then the lower end of the range from, from there. Now that would be quite a large uh, decline on here. So for right now, I'm just looking for more than likely a big range to be forming between this low and this high.
Now let's take a look at the NASDAQ. These, there's some interesting patterns. These are what I call conflicting patterns going, going on. Um, here we've got, if you see this cluster from here, where I've got this pink dash line drawn in these lows here, we have what looks like an inverse head and shoulder pattern, or this could be a cup and handle type of a pattern here. But here's the measured move of this pattern, just taking the height of the pattern and projecting it up from approximately the breakout area. And you can see the price almost reached that um, target on that. And now we've had a pullback and some testing so far back into where that breakout is. Well, I've drawn in potentially what could be an ABCD buy pattern, again, using the March lows up to these highs, and that would bring it down to about a 0.382 retracement and close to retesting the February highs. And NASDAQ was the first one to make new highs and had quite a run to the upside. So it would not be unusual to come back down around this area, even closer here, even the 0.50. So that's what I'm watching right now on the NASDAQ. And the S&P futures is very similar with that inverse head and shoulder looking pattern. So I've marked out um, sort of the range of that pattern and the center of that pattern. Yesterday, we had a large down day in the indexes. And you can see here, this is where the S&P came back down and retested uh, the breakout area of that pattern. So we may, what I'm expecting now is to see um, a retracement back up using this high to this low, which might provide a short-term um, opportunity back down again. Um, if the price fails below the center line, then again, I'd be looking for some deeper corrections using the March, March lows up to the uh, early September highs. Uh, this, uh, this chart is really interesting. This chart, you can find this on stock charts. Uh, this is really easy to find if you just um, scroll down um, on the left-hand side of the uh, toolbars that they have. And this, this is a market carpet chart, and this is a, the S&P sector uh, ETFs. And yesterday, being a large down day, um, I had noticed that there were some green areas that showed up here. And this is a really great tool to use. And especially if you have an extreme down day and you want to find some sort of pockets of strength because you can use those uh, in the future. And what this one was showing yesterday, it was showing mostly all of the airline stocks. We have United Airlines on here. Packar was also listed, not an airline, but there was America, American Airlines listed on here, um, Alaska Airlines and Southwest Air. And they were all you know, green on the day on a very large uh, down day. And I had noticed when I went and looked at the charts that all of the airline stocks that are listed on here are all forming uh, large kind of coiling ranges. And uh, the last time I did the daily five, which was on, I believe it was October 6, I showed a lot of charts that were in that type of ranging coiling. And this is exactly what we're seeing in the market conditions right now. A lot of charts that are in range types, uh, range type environments. And uh, that's due to a lot of unknowns right now, the elections, the stimulus packages, the airlines are waiting uh, for help from the from the government, so it's not unusual to see them in this coiling range. Now we're seeing them on the upside on such a down day was uh, interesting to see. And if you want to just uh, go look those stocks up, you'll see those ranges, and then you can mark in the highs and lows of the ranges. And when there's more definitive news that comes out that either helps the airlines or does not help them, it's probably going to 
going to predict the direction that those break out of the ranges. So again, this is a really handy tool. I love to look at this on stockcharts.com. Well, that's it for our daily five today. And I hope everybody enjoyed this and we'll see you on the next daily five. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.